Hello, today I'm going to show you how to factor some basic trinomials. What I mean by basic trinomials is that the leading coefficient is going to be of degree 1. So when you look at it, it looks like there isn't even one there, but it's just a 1. So to give you a head start of how to do this, or not a head start, give you an introduction to how to do this, I'm going to show you how to distribute, which you've done before, probably many times. So let's say I was given this quadrat, this, uh, here I've got a binomial times a binomial, and I want to distribute or multiply this out. What you'd probably say is you need to distribute or FOIL, but what I call this is I call this the lobster claw. See how that looks like a lobster claw? One day that's going to catch on. Anyway, x times x plus 4 gives me x squared plus 4x. I want to distribute 2 to the x plus 4, that gives me 2x plus 8. Now, I'm going to combine like terms here. 4x plus 2x is 6x. And I get it distributes to x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now, you've probably done that many times. The reason why I'm going over it is because factoring is the complete opposite of that. So if you can learn some of the tricks of distributing, it'll help you better understand how to factor. So now, let's... Let's think about, is there an easier way I could do this? x minus 3 and x plus 1. Instead of multiplying it out doing the lobster claw, how could I figure out, I know it's going to be x squared plus something x plus something, okay? How did we get the 6? Well, we added the 2 and 4 together to get 6. How did we get the 8? We multiplied the 2 and the 4 to get the 8. So... If I'm looking at this, if I add negative 3 and 1, that gives me negative 2. So I'm thinking this is going to be negative 2. And if I multiply negative 3 and positive 1, that's negative 3. Would this multiply out to give me x squared minus 2x minus 3? Well, let's go and do this the long way just to make sure we're good. We're going to start out by lobster clawing here. That would give me x squared plus x minus 3x minus 3. Sure enough, if I add x and negative 3x, I get negative 2x minus 3. So it worked. So with that in mind, take a second. I want you to think, how could I distribute this without doing the lobster claw? What would this become? I want you to pause and think on that. If we do the same thing we did on the other ones, we're going to add the 6 and negative 3 to get plus 3x, and then multiply them to get minus 18. And there you go. You could check that if you wanted, but that's kind of the shortcut. The numbers multiply to give you the negative 18. The numbers add to give you the positive 3. Now, the reason why I'm going over that is because that's going to be important for us to know that relationship when we are dis factoring, which is the opposite of distributing. So let's come down and let's look at a couple examples here. So here, I want to factor x squared plus 6x plus 8. To do that, I'm going to factor, it means we're going to basically put it into parentheses like this. And since it's x squared to begin with, I know there's an x here and an x there. What I need to figure out, though, is what are the two numbers that go in here? Well, if you remember our relationship before, how did we get that number there? How did we get the 8? And it was the two numbers multiplied. These two numbers multiplied to give you 8. How did we get the 6? The two numbers added to give you 6. So what I do is I make this little x. And I think, okay, I'm, I'm looking for two numbers. The numbers multiply to give me 8, and they add to give me 6. And if you want, you can even put like a little x here to show you that you're multiplying to give you 8, plus to say you're adding to give you 6. Well, what are numbers that multiply to 8? It's 1 and 8, 2 and 4. Which of those add to 6? And the answers are 2 and 4. So all you're going to do is put those numbers, plus 2, plus 4, in the parentheses, and now you have just factored. And you can actually look back and see, oh, this was the same problem we just did. Right above it, x squared plus 6x plus 8. We got that from distributing x plus 2 and x plus 4. And then if we factor, we go the opposite, we get that. So, and if you want to check your work, just multiply it out. You should get the same thing. Cool. Now let's go and do a couple more examples here. 
I'm going to want to factor x squared plus 2x minus 15. So again, I'm going to be putting it into parentheses. I'll have an x here and an x here, and I just need to think, okay, what are the two numbers? Well, I know that they need to multiply to give me negative 15. And then they need to add to give me positive 2. Now, what does it tell you if they multiply to give you a negative? The only way we can multiply to get a negative is if we have a positive multiplied with a negative. Now, what does it tell you if they multiply to a negative but add to a positive? It means that the positive number had to be the bigger number. So let's think, what numbers multiply to 15? That would be 1 and 15, 3 and 5. We want the difference between those numbers to be 2. So that's going to be 3 and 5. But we need one of those to be negative because they multiply to a negative 15. Since they add to a positive, it means the smaller number is negative, the bigger number is positive. So my answer is x minus 3 and x plus 5. That is how you'd factor x squared plus 2x minus 15. If you wanted to check your work, you just multiply it out. You got it. All right, last one that we're going to do together, then I'm going to have you try to do some on your own. So x squared minus 14x minus 15, we are going to say what numbers multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 14. Well, this time, instead of using 3 and 5 as our factors, we're going to have to use 1 and 15. But which one will be positive, which one will be negative? And since they add to a negative, the bigger number is negative, so this is just x plus 1 and x minus 15. And again, if you want to check your work, multiply it back out, do the lobster claw, and you should get the same thing you started with. Okay, what I want you to do now is I want you to pause, and I want you to try these three on your own. All right, I hope you actually took the time to pause and try to work those ones out. But as we, I've already gone through and answered them here, what multiplies to 24 and adds to 10? It's 4 and 6. What multiplies to negative 21 and adds to a positive 4? That's 7 and negative 3. What multiplies to negative 30 and adds to 29? That's 30 and negative 1. So that's the basics of factoring when your leading coefficient is just a plain old 1. I hope that makes sense. Good luck, and I'll see you next time.